Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. On today's episode, we'll be covering action across the U.S. from Irwindale, California, down to Phoenix, Arizona, across to Alabama and Florida, and then up to North Carolina. We had nine of the race face drivers seeing action, so let's get right to the results. Five drivers competed at Phoenix Raceway in both the Arkham Menard Series and the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Let's start with the Arkham Menard Series General Tire 150, where three of our drivers took the green flag along with 36 other drivers on Friday. We start with Jesse Love, who is the reigning ARCA West champion, winning the title in 2020 and in 2021 with Bill McAnally Racing. This year, Jesse's running selected ARCA Menard Series events with championship team Venturini Motorsports. The last time Jesse was at Phoenix, he left with the championship title. Jesse qualified third in his number 20 Crescent Tool Toyota Camry. Here's what Jesse had to say after the race. Hey everyone, it's Jesse Love. I ran the ARCA race at Phoenix on Friday. We qualified third and found ourselves restarting third for the green-white checkered restart with only two laps to go, of course, and made a bid for the lead and missed the block on the bottom through the dog leg and somebody got to my inside. Uh, got us up the racetrack quite a bit and ended up coming out of turn two and six. So crazy how fast things can happen on a restart at Phoenix, but uh, we put ourselves in a position to win and, and some things didn't go our way, but um, I'll take my learning lessons from my mistake and I'll head to Dover and walk out of Dover with a win. Up next for Jesse, super late models at Chris Motorsports Park with Chris Wimmer Motorsports on March 26. Connor Mozak was also at Phoenix Raceway with Brett Holmes Racing and the number 23 Nick Taylor Chevrolet. Connor had a great qualifying lap, posting the fifth fastest and ran in the top 10 for the entire race. Let's get Connor's take on this race. Hey guys, just had my first ARCA race here at Phoenix, uh, able to bring it home for a top 10. We uh, had a pretty good car all day, we qualified fifth which I thought was uh, pretty good. Uh, it just took us a little bit to get going. Uh, I know I got some, some things to work on, but uh, learned a lot. And, um, you know, we had some good battles uh, running about 6th to 7th most of the race. I uh, feel like we had probably a, a 5th place car uh, there at the end. We were able to run good lap times whenever we would get single file. Just, um, you know, be a little more aggressive on those restarts, especially at somewhere like Phoenix where, you know, it gets 3-4 wide almost every restart. Um, and then late in the race, we had a vibration coming in, uh, and it just kept getting worse and worse. And where we were at, we didn't really have too many cars behind us on the lead lap. So we wanted to be safe and make sure there was no loose wheel or anything. So we decided to come down pit road and, and, uh, change the right side tires, make sure everything was good. So came back out 13th with just a few laps to go and we were able to, to, you know, get back up to the top 10 there at the end. So overall, I feel like a pretty good day. Uh, it was, you know, a strong field with almost 40 cars. Um, but I think we'll, we know where we can get better and, and we'll come back and be stronger for our next race at Kansas. Up next for Connor, Pirelli Trans Am Series with Scott Legacy Racing at Charlotte Motor Speedway's Roval on March 20th. And finally, Joey East, who was in the number 54 Richwood Meets Ford for Nate Clower Motorsports. Joey qualified 12th but suffered a spark plug wire coming loose early in the race. Let's check in with Joey for an update. We had a fast car in Phoenix today. We qualified in practice in 12th, and then in the race we were running right about there when I went in the dog leg once and uh, one of the spark plug wires popped off and then we lost power and then we got a yellow and we came in and fixed it. And I started in at the tail end of the field, and then the leaders were, were there was 40 cars, so as I worked my way through traffic, the leaders lapped me, and then we finally got the lucky dog, and we were able to work ourselves up to a 13th place finish. Up next for Joey, Arkham Menard Series West at Irwindale Speedway on March 26. 
The race was won by David Gilliland's Taylor Gray. It only seems fitting after the week that this team had. The DGR hauler was involved in an accident on the way to Phoenix that took the life of hauler driver Steven Stotts. Our Raceface family would like to extend our sympathy to the entire Stotts and DGR family. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we'll check in with NASCAR Xfinity driver Sheldon Creed and Anthony Alfredo. Stay tuned for more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Hudson Bolger and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Let's now talk about NASCAR Xfinity Series. Sheldon Creed was at Phoenix Raceway on Saturday for the United Reynolds 200 in his number two Whelan Engineering, Trench Shoring, Richard Childress Chevrolet. Sheldon qualified ninth. Let's get an update directly from the driver. What's up guys? We just getting back from Phoenix. Uh, we had a tough day in our RCR race in Wheeling Chevy Camaro. It was, uh, and it was long for us. It looked promising at first. I thought we were really fast in practice. Uh, we were sixth on time, fifth on average, which would normally give you a good sign on, on how your day is going to go. Um, but man, it was, it was kind of opposite of that. I think with the rubber and just track tightened up a ton and, and yeah, we weren't prepared for that and, um, fought all day. Pit crew got a spot on pit road every time, uh, had really good stops with, with the changes we were making on pit road. So, uh, really happy with that. And, and I thought Jeff and, and the guys made really good adjustments. I thought we got it driving a lot better for, for how our day was going. Just didn't seem to pick up any speed and, and kind of just rode around no 10th to 15th all day. So, um, yeah, that's frustrating for us and, and really hard to, to do that and, and, um, get through your day. So, um, yeah, looking on it next week and, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have some more speed for you guys. Congratulations to Noah Gregson on his win. Sheldon currently sets 14th in points heading into Saturday's race at the newly paved Atlanta Motor Speedway. Anthony Alfredo was also at Phoenix Raceway in his number 23 Dude Wipes Our Motorsports Chevrolet. But his weekend was filled with strange mechanical gremlins and to be truthful was over before it ever began. Let's get an update from Anthony. Hey everybody, super strange weekend at Phoenix Raceway. Had a mechanical issue that prevented us from even getting a single lap of practice in. We missed qualifying while repairing it. Thought we had it fixed and we went out to start the race. Uh, it quickly became apparent that we had to replace another part in the car. So we had to go to the garage, get that fixed up, but appreciate the hard work of everybody at Our Motorsports to find a solution to the problem, get it repaired, and get us back out there so we could learn a little bit. It seemed like we had a really fast dude wipe Chevrolet Camaro, handled pretty well, and I definitely think we had something to compete with, maybe even run top 10, at least top 12. So disappointing to throw a race like that before it gets started, but you'll have that and we'll rebound in Atlanta. So appreciate everybody's support. We'll get them next week. Wow, that was a tough weekend, but you gotta love his attitude. And he looks forward to this weekend's race at Atlanta. One of the greatest things about being on the NASCAR National Circuit is all the cool places that you get to visit. And for Connecticut born Anthony Alfredo, he made the most of his West Coast swing. Let's see what Fast Pasta did with some of his free time last week. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here. I had an awesome week in between Las Vegas Motor Speedway and now Phoenix Raceway. Was able to travel from Vegas to Phoenix and see the Grand Canyon, even stopped at the Hoover Dam, uh, went to a Cirque du Soleil show in Vegas, uh, and a Country Music Award, so it's pretty neat. The West Coast Swing is one of the coolest parts about racing at the national level in NASCAR. A lot of cool things to get to see in, in between races, and with all the traveling, sometimes you don't get to do that. So definitely enjoyed my time and got to see a lot of cool things. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll meet two of our newest race face drivers, plus check in on Caden Honeycutt and Grant Thompson. Stay tuned for more race face driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name's Brody Moore, and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. 
Grant Thompson was at South Alabama Speedway for the Baby Rattler 125 in his number 54 Proactive Motorsports late model on Saturday. Let's check in with Grant for his post-race recap. Hey everyone, Grant here. Just finished up the Baby Rattler 125 here at South Alabama Speedway. So I uh, qualified 14th, not the best. We had a better qualifying car and I messed up on my part and I didn't drive the car hard enough. But uh, anyways, took the green in the race. Uh, we gained a few spots, didn't do bad in the first half of the race, I'd say. But um, towards the end, I, I kind of struggled with hitting my marks and figuring out where I needed to be, where the car was faster. There was a line that I was trying to run or that I was, that I thought was slower, but it was actually faster. It felt slower to me. I was telling my crew guys that, and they tell me, get to the bottom, get to the bottom, get to the bottom. And you know, I, I, I tried it and it was actually faster. I, ju I just struggled with hitting the bottom in three and four. But um, I had an okay race, I, I, I'd say. We, um, I, I gave it all I had, but um, that's a recap for you guys. I'm not sure where we finished. I believe like 15th or 16th, but uh, I can't thank all my guys enough. Jason, Eddie, William, Dad, uh, Michael, my mom, just everybody that helps out. But I uh, can't thank Cirque Motorsport enough, Joe's Racing Products, PSC Brace, Kersey Power Steering, Aero Bodies, Impact Racing Products, Alverson Motorsports, just everybody that helps out. But uh, that's a recap for you guys here at the Baby Rattler 125. I will see you guys at the next one. Thank you guys for listening. My hat goes off to Grant and his dad and the entire Proactive Motorsports team for getting this car ready as part shortages has hampered them as well as other teams across the country. Hopefully we'll get this resolved soon. Up next for Grant, Pro Late Models at Mobile International Speedway on April 16th. Caden Honeycutt made his debut with Barry Nelson Motorsports at the $30,000 to win Cars Tour season opener at Caraway Speedway on Sunday in the number 12 Autos by Nelson, Solid Rock Carriers, Friends of Jacklin Chevrolet. Caden qualified fourth and drove his butt off, but came up one position short. Let's check in with Caden and get his take on the race. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. We just finished up the old North State Nationals here at Caraway Speedway, $30,000 to win in the late mall stock race. Uh, qualified fourth, he had a really good qualifying effort. We uh, did a lot of things right and uh, ended up finishing second. Man, we, we led for a uh, while, led over 70 laps the whole race. So we had the most laps led. Um, strategy kind of bit us uh, the last part of the end, but uh, it happens. We had a really good race car today. Uh, just appreciate the opportunity in Nelson Motorsports. We're gonna have a great year this year. Uh, I have a lot of momentum on our side and we're gonna head to Hickory and give them heck there. I uh, just wanna thank my sponsors, Kurt Ipock and Solid Rock Carriers, Chevrolet, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, uh, Dennis Murphy, uh, Rod Wortham, uh, Race Face Brand Development, uh, my mom and dad, my girlfriend, everybody that supports me and my family, uh, DJ, Jeff, uh, all of our crew this weekend, they did a phenomenal job. So uh, I appreciate everybody that's part of this and uh, we're gonna have a great, great year this year. So we're gonna uh, head to Hickory and uh, hopefully uh, get in $7,000 to win and we're gonna hopefully uh, go after another championship this year. That's the goal. What a heartbreaker, but at the same time, a great way to start his championship quest. Up next for Caden, Cars Tour at Hickory Motor Speedway on March 26. With the NASCAR series heading into Atlanta Motor Speedway this weekend, we thought it only fitting to give you some insight on what took place over the last six months at Atlanta on this week's Track Facts. Hey, I'm Larry McReynolds with NASCAR on Fox here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. Now, I've been coming to Atlanta Motor Speedway since 1980. That was my first time to come here as a crew member. When we rolled in here in 1997, this place was totally different. They had moved the front stretch from the back stretch to the front stretch that we have right now, and also they changed the configuration of this straightaway. It used to be a true oval. Nothing has been done to this racetrack since 1997. Yeah, they've maybe reached in here and filled some of the cracks and did a little patchwork, but you think about 1997, We've got about seven drivers in the field for the Quaker State 400. They're younger than this track surface. But when we run this race here in 2022, this mile and a half track will be totally different. 
One, it's going to have a new surface. That's going to create a lot of speed and a lot of grip. But there's other major changes. This banking right now is 24 degrees. They're going to increase the banking by 4 degrees to 28 degrees. The width from the wall to this line, which is the racing groove, you see them moving all around. Right now, it's 55 feet wide. They're going to narrow it up to 40 feet wide. Now, that's still pretty wide. Think about Daytona. Now, there's one other X factor when we come back here in 2022 besides changes to the track. We have a new race car, the next gen car. There's still a lot of unknowns about that next gen car. But whether it's the next gen car, or whether it's our current car, a new surface, narrower track, more banking, it's going to enhance the racing. I think that's almost creating a mile and a half Daytona and Talladega, and I can't wait. Looks like this is going to be a very interesting race weekend. We're headed for our last commercial break, and when we come back, we'll meet two of our newest race face drivers, plus a quick rundown on this weekend's races. Stay tuned for more race face driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Grant Thompson, and you're watching race face driver updates on Racing America. I want to take this moment and introduce you to two of our newest race face drivers. First, Jade Avedesian, a 15 year old power eye midget driver from Clovis, California. Jade is the 2020 Tulsa Shootout Restricted Champion as well as the 2020 Lucas Oil Now 600 Champion. Atharve Desai is an 18 year old Formula 3 driver from India now living in Washington, D.C., and attending Oxford Engineering School in the U.K. Atharve is the American eCart National Champion and has his sights on reaching the ultimate level in motorsports, F1. Let's now check in on our last two race face drivers that saw action last weekend. Jake Bowman was at Irwindale Speedway and his number 71 pro legend, where he qualified third in a tight field that saw the top four only separated by 67 one hundredth of a second. Let's get a post-race recap from the young 15-year-old Huntington Beach driver. Hey guys, Jake Bowman here. Uh, we won tonight. Um, it, was a, it was a long race for a legend car race. It was 35 laps at Irwindale Speedway. Um, my car started to get uh, free on entry, so the rear end started to come around a little bit. Um, Donnie Sinauris, he made my car really good. Uh, I can't thank him enough. Um, I want to thank my mom and dad for, ma uh, for making all this happen. Uh, Pacific Coast Propane, uh, PB Plumbing, Race Face. Thank you. Congratulations, Jake, on the win. Carter Whalen was at New Smyrna Speedway for round one of the quarter midget Dixie Shootout, where he was competing in five different classes for Landon Cox Racing. We catch up with Carter to get a quick recap on that weekend. Hey everyone, little post-race recap from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. It was our first leg of the Dixie Shootout Point Series and also our first time running five cars. We ended up qualifying all five cars mid-pack in the A mains after some, after some good heat races. And then in the A mains, all but one car finished mid-pack and in that other one car we got a second place in unrestricted animal super happy with that and can't thank everybody enough behind me especially D danny cox the entire cox family wouldn't be able to do this all without him ultimate qm mark tuggle rb conquest and strategic marketing and david medina photography up next for carter north georgia qma on march 26. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Hudson Bulger will return to Atlanta Motor Speedway in his number 17 Byron Power Sports Can-Am Young Lions Legend car for round five of the Furious Five series on March 19th. Hudson has three top fives and a sixth place finish in his first four starts. Cole Denton will also be at Atlanta Motor Speedway for round five of the INEX Furious 5 series in his number 46 Mellow Yellow Bandolero on Saturday.
Cole has three wins and a second in four starts in this series. But overall this year, the young man has nine wins, three seconds, and a third in 13 starts. I smell a national championship in the works. Jade Avedesian will be at Port City Raceway for her first Power Eye National Midget event of the year on Thursday, March 24th in her number 14 CMT Midget. Well, that's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check us out on Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham, thanks for watching. Thank you.